Welcome along guys, welcome back to the garage and yes, hallelujah, this is a hyper motard video. Well thanks to everyone who keeps commenting in every video I upload is where's the hyper, when's the next hyper video, well you lucky people, I haven't forgotten about it, I haven't sold it, <laughs> well you think I might have because it's actually nowhere to be seen in the garage, but it's time, finally for a hyper motard update and I'll tell you exactly what's been happening and why there's been some humongous delays but first of all roll that intro roll the intro Where do I start with this? So to make this as brief as possible, because I've got some good things I want to cover in this one, I basically took the heads off the bike, was the last time, back in, well, when was it? March, March, February, maybe April time, the heads came off. Oh God. I posted them off to factory projects to be Cerakoted and they went missing in the post. The, the heads, the cylinders lost in transit to factory projects. So thankfully I insured them. So it's taken me two months worth of claiming, trying to claim back the money to buy replacement cylinder heads. And then of course, once I've had the money, I've had to try and source some good secondhand ones. So I've actually purchased some cylinders and pistons. I had my pistons, but I bought matching cylinders and pistons from a low mileage bike in Italy. Antoine had some cylinder heads which he could reuse. Obviously, I didn't send off all of my head internals, so I sent all that off to Antoine. Rather than risk anything else getting lost in the post, I've decided to forget the Cerakoting on the heads. I've sent it all, because I come from Italy, the cylinder heads, they've been sent directly to Antoine. He's now awaiting port. He's really busy. You know, obviously, this has all been delayed. He's now in his busiest season. He's readying bikes for... BSB, he's got customers lined up, and then he's got my cylinder heads, which need porting and reassembling. So I'm on the back of the list, really, being a freebie. So I'm hoping that it's going to be soon, that we're going to be able to get those cylinder heads back, and I can finally put that engine back together. So that's what's been happening with the delays. Basically, my engine's gone missing. It's gone AWOL in the post. <laughs> Absolute disaster. It's the worst possible. Thank God I insured the parcels. Otherwise, I would have been out of pocket without... No, but I've had £4,000 for brand new replacements. £4,000 from Ducati. Lesson to be learned there. Make sure you insure your packages for their full value because uh, I would have been screwed. Now, I've not been sat around doing nothing with this project. This shock has been off to Brooks Barn to be rebuilt. So this has been rebuilt, fresh oil. I've actually changed the spring as well because I've gone fatty spec on the spring. So it's a brand new oil in spring on here for fatties, for COVID fatties. And then, uh, so, yeah, so that's ready to go back on. So that's the rear sorted. But if you remember rightly, I wanted to get those funny bronze coloured tubes done gold. So in this episode, we're now going to strip the forks remove the tubes and I'm going to a local anodizers to get those done gold and we're going to be going through the whole process of how to anodize parts as part of this video. We can't put engines back together but we can get the suspension sorted. So I'm now going to strip these down, take the tubes out. I, I don't have a very good track record of working on suspension. The last fork I tried to strip I ended up damaging the internal cartridge and had to replace it. That was on the fire blade so I swore never to touch suspension myself again <laughs> but I'm gonna risk it I'm gonna risk it I'm gonna try and strip this down I've ordered the the tools to get the uh, to get it apart that done does the cap at the top I've got the manual I've looked at the process to strip these down I think I can do it once they're all stripped down and coated I'm gonna send these probably back off to Brooks Barn to be reassembled I'm not gonna do the reassembly of these but I'm gonna try the strip down so tubes off let's get these puppies apart this is the special tool goes on there and then you can undo it a top tip when you come to adjust your suspension to save you scratching the adjusters i saw this on a video which uh, odin's helped make is to use a plastic bag and that way when you adjust when you get your spanners on 
you don't scratch any of the anodizing. So first of all, we're going to loosen the preload adjuster. Take all the preload out of the spring. And then this special tool should fit in the little slots like that. And we should better undo the top cap now. Fingers crossed. This would obviously be easier in the bike. Really, really need a decent vice at some point. This is shit. That holds the bottom of the cartridge in. That little bolt in there. This is the cartridge, the internal cartridge. Let's put this back in there so it's not lost. This is why you have a professional to do this because it's a bit mucky and a bit shitty. So back to the fork leg. I think that should now come out. Yeah, back to the instructions first, I think. Blah, 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 blah. Looks like to split the stanchion from the tube, we've got to now take out the dust rings and stuff, the seals. Obviously when they're rebuilt, they'll be put back together in your dust seals and stuff anyway. Oh, Jesus. Coming very slowly. Oh, I'll do that either. I hate this job already. There they are, worth the effort, all stripped down. I, I say I, I, I hate doing suspension and I'm not gonna put these back together. I'm gonna send these off to Brooks Barn to be reassembled. I, I may even, I'm toying with the idea of changing and getting some uprated cartridges. And Drini Racing do a set of cartridges for these for about 400 quid. So uh, I'm toying with the idea of doing cartridges. I'm not 100% sure yet. Oh, why did I try and tackle that suspension? Oh, nightmare. Cut myself to pieces. <laughs> I don't have the tools to do that sort of job. There's no way I'm putting those back together. They're going back to Brooks Barn to be reassembled. I'm not touching them. But before that happens, let's get those tubes anodized. There we are, we're here. We are at R&J anodizing. So I thought I'd bring you along to show you the process. I've got my fork tubes. What's involved with anodizing? I'm quite interested in it, so you're coming along too. <laughs> so it's quite noisy in here, obviously. This is a working environment. So you've got the big vats where they're anodizing stuff. And basically what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna jig up Jig them up, they need to be stripped back and the anodizing they've got removed and then as you want a shiny finish, you want a shiny Olin's type finish, they've got to be polished before being anodized I think. So, but this is where it all happens, R and J anodizing. From here we've got to remove the old anodizing so yeah. into the caustic. Uh, that's caustic soda is it, that's going to strip. That's going to strip the strip loading the, film uh, off them. Okay. Strip off the old anodizing before yeah. the new stuff going on. Nasty stuff. That's the beauty about anodizing. You get 50% penetration into the aluminium and then 50% growth. So it actually penetrates the Oh, really? Out. So it goes, it, 
Oh, right, actually penetrates and sits on top, sort of thing. Ah, okay, oh, interesting. That's why you can't rub it off. Oh, right, that's why it's so good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's why you want it. That's all the silicon in Silicon within the aluminium? Within the aluminium, that's what you're washing off. Because it's really good aluminium, it's like that. Right. It's not so good, it's like that. Yeah. This is the acid, is it? This it's is an acid the, dip, just to remove. Just get the black off. The black. This way, you do it, bloody hell. This is where you dispose of the bodies, and this way. Yeah, this is where the bodies go. <laughs> there we go, all stripped now. So that's all the, the anodising stripped. Acid dip, rinsed, so now we're ready to do some polishing just to clean off the ribbing a little bit on the forks and polish them so when they're anodized, they'll be shiny. That's the plan. Mark is going to do the polishing. Hell of a machine there. Better than the little one I've got at home. Polishing done, next part of the process. So anodizing is, uh, what, what was it again? Just tell me who it is. It is a controlled process to create an anodic film. Okay. Controlled process to create an anodic film. Using electricity, yeah, to... Using electricity. Okay. So, all I'm doing now, There's an electric chair. Electric chair. <laughs> making, <laughs> making sure the you get the nice current through the bar. Yeah, yeah, down into the heart. Oh. How come it doesn't anodise? It, well, it does anodise those as well, does it? Yeah, it yeah, anodises the jigs. Jigs come jigs out gold. Jigs come out gold as well. Yeah. This is sulfuric anodising tank, so sulfuric acid basically in this tank. We're power out now. Power out. We'll do these. Mm. About you 18. control your current there, dear, about 18. Yeah. About 18 volts. 18 volts. Making contact voltage. Yeah. Oh, right, okay, yeah. Bubbles up, isn't it? Yeah. Now you can see it drawing off the side and it's starting to grow a, a little bit too. So the idea is to try and get as close to the Olin's gold as possible. Now Matt says that might be quite hard to get it like that, but we'll see, we'll see how we get on. If you leave it in the gold dye tank too long, apparently it can go a bit of a muddy, a muddy gold, so it's a case of timing it perfectly. But we'll see how close we get, we'll get a nice gold finish anyway, downside better than that funny bronze colour. film if you looked at it underneath the microscope yeah it looked like an egg box oh, oh, okay. all the pores right so the dye actually penetrates into the pores and then what you do is go into there and nickel acetate goes into the pores and fills it and fills it, fills it, fills it. it. oh bloody hell and that's what that tank is and that's the gold gold dye Yeah, 
There's guys going into it all the time now. Right. And they get to a certain point that it can't take no more. And if you've tried forcing it in past that, right, it doesn't happen to that. See it starting to go? Looks like the team one misses the mate. <laughs> it's pretty good though, isn't it? Going, it's going. Yeah, lovely, isn't it? You know, as I said to you before, if you touch that now, you just have a you beat of mark it, yeah. You'd mark it. You literally can't touch it. Captain, <laughs> look at these. These are just what I wanted. The, the, I didn't think we'd be able to achieve a gold which was absolutely perfect, but that is beautiful. Just what I wanted. There's a few tiny little marks, I mean, that they couldn't get out. These are a little bit damaged anyway, so you've got some tiny little marks are still on them, but I'll just face all that inwards when they're back in the bike. So, but they are just beautiful. So, huge, huge thanks to RJ Anodizing. If you want your stuff done, these would cost £100 to get done a set of tubes, including the polishing, all of that process you saw in the video. So I'll put some contact details in the description. Drop them an email. Um, but just it just goes to show, I mean, you can get anything changed on your bike. If you want gold suspension, get gold suspension. I'm going to go through the whole bike now when it goes back together. There may be other things that I might want to change the colour of. But I think the black and the gold is going to look, oh, it's going to look gorgeous. Let's have a little look at it. So it's going to look something like that. Gold with the black. <laughs> that looks good, doesn't it? That looks fantastic. I love that. So there we are. So these are going to now go off to Brooks Barn and they're going to rebuild them for me. I'm not going to tackle these myself. It's bad enough stripping them. I really, really don't want to have to put these back together. So I'm going to get it done professionally. Get these put back together, reassembled, new you know, new seals and everything like that going in as well. So Brooks Barn, I think it's about £150 to rebuild the forks. And the shock was 150 as well. Plus it was 100 for the Olin Spring. So the shock was about 250 These are going to be 150 to put back together. The bike's 12 years old, so I thought get the suspension refreshed while I'm in here. And I'm glad I did, even though the forks look like they've only been done very, very recently. But, oh well. Oh, fork oil fork oil all over me it's the worst oil i've ever come in contact with it's absolutely horrible it's as slippery as chuff but there we are a slippery chuff and we're all done thanks for watching um i don't know when the next episode will be hopefully soon hopefully twan can get those cylinder heads sorted and we can get them back on the bike and then that'll be the next episode putting the engine back together then everything else can go back together i've got some other bits and bobs I won't go into it now, but I've got a few other things to go on the bike as well. The bike is going to be incredible at this rate. The amount of quality parts going on it is going to be unbelievable. It's going to be one of the best hypers out. Oh, one more thing. I've actually got a custom exhaust going on. Pro Race, I've never heard of Pro Race. They make a lot of exhaust systems. They're going to do me a full custom exhaust system. And I want twin 
rear pipes, but short, not like the standard ones that stick all out, little short twin pipes at the back. Oh, it's going to be amazing. So that's going to be coming as well. Once the engine's back in, I'll take the bikes, bike up to Pro Race, do a little bit of videoing around the Pro Race uh, facilities, a bit like we did with the anodizing, and that's going to look amazing with a full custom. And they do all like those little uh, little pieces where they weld them all together, so they, all the joins are like the little pieces of welded pipe work. Oh. It's going to look amazing. It's going to be incredible. I'm really excited about it. But there we go. That's all to come. So if you like the sound of that, hit that subscribe button, tick that bell, and I will see you on the next one. See you later, guys.